Welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles. This is episode 132 of our Legend of Zelda Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I am Articulate the Game Master, and with me as always I have Nether playing Renji Box. Good evening, or whatever time zone you find yourself in. I have Hikan Sio being played by Alvarance. Hello. I have Zaiden Shari being played by River Pirate. Hey. And I have Keystrith playing Max. We're back. Yeah, it's yeah. been a little bit. Um, the thing, things have happened. Things have. Things have happened. Real life happens as it as it often does. Um, but we we like are back all, now. It happens all the time. Yeah. And um, real life, why you got to keep happening? I know, yeah. right? I know. Um, Hold on, someone's knocking at my door. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Real life. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> put <laughs> Don't let it in. Real life takes lemons. <laughs> Burn real life's house down with the lemons. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But yes, uh, while we while we await for our uh, erstwhile druid to return to us, um, I think the only other thing there will probably be a uh, a week where we won't do this sometime in November because I will be in Japan at that time. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, that's the that's only very other exciting. yeah, that's the only other thing I can think of at the moment in which there might be a a, a known point in which we will not be able to run. Um, because I'll be 11 These hours in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting trip. But otherwise, yeah, that's as, as far as I can tell, that is the only other time in which we will not be able to run. And maybe having like a little bit of time off over over the holiday break, um, as it were, because of family obligations and the like. Uh, but we'll handle that when we get to it. Um, Whenever you talk about when you when you go to Japan and if you talk about food in the the chat, I'm gonna have to post the the clip of Snake saying, "But how does it taste?" <laughs> <laughs> There's um oh I keep I keep occasionally just like opening up a map of Tokyo to the point in which the hotel is and then just clicking on restaurant and search this area and seeing <laughs> what places are there and like having a look at the menu and seeing all the different advertising pictures there's so many places there's a yakuniku place nearby which is going to be interesting there's i want to uh, there's like a indian curry place there's a sushi place there's at least three zakayas and it's just ah oh, it's going to be good while while indian curry very good there is a difference between indian and japanese curry oh and yeah I would absolutely and you, you you get some too Yes, yeah, definitely going to be getting some um, some katsu curry and everything like oh, Japanese curry yeah. as well. Is I think it's the the thing that appeals to me about the Indian curry place is the way they do it over do it over there in the sense mm. that there's something there's something uniquely different compared to how we do Indian curry over here, as it were, right. um, yeah. where everything's kind of like Welcome neatly back. separated out and everything. It's oh. It was some form of charity worker. I didn't open the door enough to look and tell. <laughs> I see. Uh... <laughs> well, it's okay, back. we filled time. We filled time. Yes, I think it was a charity worker. No, I wasn't going to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> see, if it was a charity worker or a cryptid, it, either way, we, we will live in ignorance. We're, at least we're, I'm sorry, least but saying. after six o'clock, it's too late to knock on my door. Yes. Mm. My family often don't eat at about seven, so it's like you're coming when people are having their dinner. That's, that's not good. It's like it's there's also like um, the the delivery window for Amazon parcels now is up to like a, up to ten p.m. in the evening. Yeah, and, and it's just like why though? If I'm not expecting something, I do not answer my door. Hmm. Mm. Good policy to have, in all honesty. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, friends, now that we are all here, what happened last time? Lionel! 
Oh, uh, Alvin's yeah. Your, yeah, yep, you were nope, muted, yep, yep, but yep. now you're not. Good. <laughs> After the uh, close encounter with the Spectre in the early hours of the morning, the group followed the uh, followed Eisenfuhrer's not Eisen not Eisenfuhrer's Rotte Kriegers, uh, the wrong Darknet um, tracks back towards the northeast, heading towards King's Ward in the hunt for the Lionel. As they gained, or as they followed the tracks, they eventually found some other tracks, which led them to a group of Bulbins riding Bulbos, and they um, made their way over to uh, speak to them to try to see if things could be met peacefully instead of through violence. And... As the lead uh, Bulbiblin at that time was talking to them, he was met with an arrow to the gut from the Lionel that we were hunting. After killing a couple of them, the Storm's Eye rushed towards the Lionel, uh, dodging arrows, taking we cover. We didn't kill a couple of them, by the way. It was the Lionel who killed them. Yes, to be clear. To be clear. Uh, dodging arrows, um, taking a couple of arrows, uh, or at least one arrow, uh, until eventually we met up with, uh, got close enough to the Lionel to begin actual combat, where through might and magic, as per usual, the Storm's Eye came out on top, deciding to uh, take pieces of the Lionel to prove that they had defeated it and some of the Lionel's equipment for Zaiden to use later with some of his magics. And that is where we ended because we weren't sure how to deal with uh, intimidating Bulblins into servitude. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Less yeah. servitude and more just not working for the enemy. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so, I believe the direction that you guys were heading in was was it east or west after meeting with the um, or dealing with the Lionel? I can't remember which direction you decided to head in in order to try and find this Bulbin camp. Um... I believe we were traveling towards King Ward to find the Lionel, and we did. Mm -hmm. But I don't personally recall. That's okay. I knew... Yeah, because we told the Bulblins to flee or to save I mean, themselves. I could just fly up and take a look around. Now that the Lionel's yeah. not there to shoot me at the sky. Okay. But yes, um, so once again we return to uh, we return to our party, having um, uh, having bested one of the more vicious entities that exists within the span of Hyrule. And while I press press the music, I wonder if it's actually playing. No, interesting. I wonder it's if it's just playing a... for us. Hmm. Yeah. Very quietly. Arid Foothills by Kevin McLeod. Yeah. How bizarre. I haven't seen this. Oh, yeah. oh no. wait, no, there we go. Took a little bit of time. Uh, that's the caching. <laughs> yeah. But yes. So, um, we return to our party having uh, standing victorious over this uh, defeated creature. Um, now with designs to see if they can use the parts of the Lionel to perhaps convince the Bulblins to stay out of the war. Um, right, that was the thing. Just take a break for like a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, if you wanted to survey the surroundings from a higher altitude now that the uh, the one of the most vicious yeah. snipers that exists in Hyrule is no longer a problem. Uh, I mean, he hit free... me while I was flying out at him, and I'm still alive. Yeah. Um, feel free to give me a perception check. That is a 23 on my part. An 11 for Max. 
I oh, was nice. going to. I was muted, but I, I was going to say that I fly up as a hawk and help Max. Okay, okay. then that's a twenty-two, 22. for Max. Twenty-two. Twenty-three and a twenty-two. Um. So. Bulblin's are, uh, at least from a from a nominally ground level, Bulblin's are a nomadic entity. So it would be unsurprising to note that it would be fairly, fairly difficult to see anything on the rolling horizons of Western Hyrule. However, um, as you fly up into the air uh, with your combined perceptions, you will be able to see that uh, lying somewhere north, north by north east, uh, north by northwest rather, um, you can see what appears to be a camp of some description with plenty of plumes of smoke. Not necessarily that the camp is on fire, but they seem to be have made pyres of some description. Um, it seems to be a couple of miles northeast. Am I aware of whether West, they yeah. like have any means of treating their dead like by, say, putting them in a funeral pyre? Uh, give me a history check. Plus zero, let's go. Eleven. Eleven. Hmm. Mm, hard to say for certain. Um, they're, they're nomadic, but also warlike. There's equal possibility that they just kind of leave their dead where they lie, um, unless they're in the middle of a camp where they just unceremoniously put them elsewhere. But it's... Um, but there's also a possibility that they burn them on a funeral pyre for the sake of... Uh, because they probably wouldn't bury them if they're moving around a lot. Yeah. Go back down and inform people. Yeah. Okay. Just, do we want to deal with this or do we want to get to finding Cassandra or whatever? Hmm. I think Sandra is the priority now. They have their rituals to deal with, and if they become a problem yet again, we can deal with it later. They did have orders to harry supply convoys on their way to Sakosa. Hmm. Worth we might the as well time it would it. take ah. just to convince them to back out, I think. Are they in kind of the same direction, at least? Uh, so, if you are... Uh, I would say that the the camp is about here. There's a ping on the yeah. on the map. Um, Show them up. So, it would be... It would be here? As, yeah, that's where they are. Um, they are fairly close by. Um, so we would swing up and then back down, basically. Mm, shouldn't be too long. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay. Max is mostly here to blow things up, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us go. All right. Okay. So, with a destination set in mind, you begin your journey across the uh, across the plains of of Hyrule Field and move northwest towards this this small bulbling camp. Um, going Rex at a casual pace. I was going to ask if he can carry one of the Lionel horns in order to be intimidating when we get the. Absolutely. <laughs> you can carry all the Lionel horns if you want. <laughs> well, Max needs the help. <laughs> well, there are props. It'd be like we we beat the Lionel, right? Yep, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that'll get their attention, and then I will scare them. <laughs> I will help. Going, uh, going at a a casual pace. The journey takes you about an hour or two, um, the sun hanging high in the sky uh, as you progress along. Um, despite this, a chill wind very briefly picks up um, 
before immediately dying down again uh, and leaving you once more into this ambient sort of silence and stillness. Um, but... Do I sense anything out of the ordinary from the breeze? Um, oh, give me a... Uh... This is gonna, I'm wondering how weird I need to be with this skill check. Arcana? Um, give me... Yeah, give me Arcana for the sake of it. I'll be, I'll be silly with skill 26. checks later. 26. Uh, you can probably tell that it's similar to the ambient weirdness that has been going on since you got to this region mm. of Hyrule. Um... Much in the same way that the sun seems to be wanting to get over, um, or get the uh, part of, part of its day out of the way as quickly as possible, um, aspect, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's just another thing to add to the the tally of um, of weirdness and possible hauntings that you are mm. experiencing. Um, the lack of the lack of ambient noise from local wildlife or just the lack of breeze is the general stillness as time goes on um so yes as you get closer to this camp you notice that it's fairly large in what it is um it's been set up uh, with a series of uh, wooden palisades um, that run a ring of around about uh, 500 feet uh, in diameter in this large circular camp. Uh, on the outside, you can see that these large stacks of wood have been set ablaze um, as uh, a few of the Bulblins uh, seem to be tending to these fires. They don't appear to be signal fires, but uh, as you get closer and your passive perceptions alert you to the details, you note that there are a few bodies that have been thrown onto the pyre. So you can mm. check off the whole kind of, it is a funerary pyre um, to, uh, to, deal with the, to deal with the dead. Um, oddly, uh, you notice that besides these bulbins who are clearly outside the camp and the ones that are patrolling the palisade they are quite sparse but you can hear something from the camp itself a large crowd shouting and snarling at something um, i'm gonna march straight into the middle i'm with max so you so bearing I'm in mind walking straight in <laughs> you're walking straight um <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, give me an active intimidation, and I'll see how the uh, the Bulbans themselves I respond. I want to help. Thirty-four. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you kind of march by um, without much of a care of anything. Uh, the f the very few Bulbans on the wall who notice you. Um, like move to stop and then they kind of get the whole sort of overlay in their vision of the glare like just the eyes um, <laughs> they see that and the menacing symbols and they're like ah oh, shit yeah, yeah and they just kind of like what 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 like it's 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 a combination of that and also what are we what what's hap what is happening <laughs> it's just like oh it's and this one guy and then suddenly like the title of Max Doom of Boblins comes over and it's like, oh shit, this is a Dark Souls boss. Why do I hear <laughs> boss music? Um... <laughs> and the fact that he's just carrying a Lionel Horn underarm casually. Yeah. Um, and so you... right, right behind uh, him, Renji is just like... It also looks like a dragon. Uh, uh... And just taking no shit either. 
So you you wander straight into camp. On the inside, uh, there's not much to speak of. There's a few pens where bulbos are being kept and tended to. Uh, there's a, a gratuitous number of lean-tos and maybe a couple of like basic buildings that would be used for stuff like the mess hall or storage or anything. But at the very center of camp, there appear the majority of this bulblim force is surrounding um, a two bulblins who are in the middle. Um, the surrounding bulblins are shouting and screaming and uh, and chanting and just it's a cacophony of of noise where none of I, them seem to. I speak blink and I pick up a bit on what they're yelling about. Uh, it, from the sounds of it, it seems that there it seems that most of them are screaming shouts of support for someone called Tarkus, T A R K U S S, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's more or less just just that kind of shouting. Um, of the two in the middle, there appears to be a younger Bulblin who is uh, who is fairly well armed and is. Um, just going to town against a much older Bulblin who is keeping his own surprisingly well. Um, and there's just, it's a constant chatter of support for what appears to be the younger Bulblin. Um, who, I'm going to roll perception for him. He did not want to roll well. Um, Don't worry, I'm not hiding anything and I'm making myself very obvious. That's okay. Um, as the as the fight continues, this younger Bulblin looks uh, like looks out into the like knocks the older man down um, and then turns around to do this big kind of like gladiator. Yeah, are you not entertained sort of stance? Um, big Randy Orton arms. And then catches eyes with you, the like the one entity in this collective who is not a Bulblin, and th through that distraction, um, like stops and lowers his arms and tilts his head and is about to say, "And who are you?" At which point the back of his head is grabbed by the older man and within one stroke, <laughs> throat is slit, oh. and the older man lets the the younger Bulblin go and the whole crowd falls silent. Um, <laughs> Matt is just going to activate Thaumaturgy so it can be heard by everyone and say, is this a bad time? <laughs> the, uh, the older Bulblin looks, looks at you, one eyebrow cocked, and then looks at the other and says, If you're done with your bullshit, get back to work! And there's a, a kind of quiet sort of Oh, we fucked up, sort of thing. It like a combination of Max and this guy. <laughs> it's like okay, it's, it's very slowly kind of as they all walk away sullenly, and the older man looks at the four of you as the crowd clears. Um, he wipes the knife on uh, on his tunic and then puts it away, and then totters over without a care for the for the younger one, and. Like, he gets about ten feet away, and then tilts his head again and says, I apologize that we are incapable of providing you with a better uh, circumstance, or, how you say, uh, a better welcoming met. We weren't expecting guests today, you see. Don't worry, I don't give a shit. Hmm. I assume not. Well then, as a general of this here collective, might I inquire as to why you are here? I was going to drop the Lionel horn in front of me and say, this guy killed a bunch of your men. He's dead now. We got like, him. Leans down, picks it up, inspects it. Hmm. Impressive work. Very well then. Lionel is dead. I suppose that takes that piece off the board. And he kind of like looks at it again and holds up. Do you want to keep it? Yes, please. 
Okay. <laughs> let you take it from his hand. <laughs> So, I suppose it would be naive of me to assume that you had done such a thing out of the goodness of your heart. Well, he was shooting at us. I suppose to be repaid in kind, I guess. But you did avenge a number of my men. Just have one request. Mm-hmm. Leave the cots going to suck us or alone for a few weeks. And perhaps longer if you value your lives. Don't worry. They might not have to worry about longer. Yeah, it raises an eyebrow and says, mm -mm. Ominous. How about we have a, a private chat? You don't have to worry. I get your message. And in fact, you might have actually done me a favor with that particular request, but come with me a moment. Um, and he turns around and totters over to one of the other, one of the wooden buildings that has no doors or windows. It's literally just kind of like a wooden gazebo. Um, yeah, Max is going to follow because he's like... Max is going to follow because he's like, this guy can't kill me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know it, he can't. Definitely not. But. And if I keep projecting that, he'll believe it. <laughs> um so he kind of he totters over to this area where there are a couple of a bit more ornately dressed uh bulblins who look over uh the older bulblin like waves a hand a couple of times and these uh these ones just kind of die. oh okay message received <laughs> and they just leave all right boss <laughs> you got it boys <clears throat> Um, so he kind of wanders over. He takes one of the available seats around this table with the which has upon it a crudely drawn map of Western Hyrule and all the little villages and all these little wooden idol things in order to act as positions of import Yay. and everything. I love those little guys. They're fun. They're so good. And um, he he sits down and says, "So let's see here." And he takes in your measure briefly. There's three Sheikah and a Hylian. Now those were not on the report. I suppose there was a little, a bit of a brief mention in places as to uh, beings of great power, I think, was given uh, to us as a missive when we started this whole mess. Um, interesting to meet you in poison, I suppose. Um... <clears throat> So you want us to uh, not bother the trade route from Sarkoza to Hyrule Castle Town, is that correct? For as long as you're willing. Hmm. <clears throat> and he thinks about it. He says, That trick you pulled with the Lionel, that might give me the, uh, the things I need in order to uh, convince my men that that is a viable proposition. What would be preventing it from being viable? He kind of looks out over the camp and then sort of shrugs a bit. He says, uh, Oblin society determines that the strongest person is the one in charge. Now, doesn't necessarily mean purely martial strength. I am not exactly the most spring of chickens when it comes to folk within my retinue, but there are other aspects of character, uh, or strength, strength of character, strength of mind, that sort of thing. And I am simply the most capable general that is currently within these walls. Um, Did you not if prove I was... to the people that you are the man in charge with that challenge before them? Essentially. Tarkus had a, a lot of ambition. He was a smart kid, but he was still a kid. 
and unfortunately, if he was allowed to live, then he would continue haranguing me about me being too cautious in this war. Unfortunately, it could not stand. But that is the way of things. Um, still, the thing that prevents me from simply telling people that we are pulling out of our agreed contract with the rebelling villages is simply that. We had the Lionel on our side, even though he was a bit of a wild card. And of course, there's whatever they're working on in Midas, but there's a simple factor that it's two villages against an entire kingdom. The kingdom are only stopping the complete annihilation of this side of the war because they don't want to. The writing is on the wall and has been there so long that it has stained the stone. But you, now that the four of you have entered this little conflict and taken care of one of the more important players on our side of the field, I think the folk around here... You got here out is... for a bit there. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> uh, how far did they get? The, writing, the writing's on the in wall. The stone. It is so long, it's on the stone. Yeah. That's what it's... we got. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's... Um, uh, but you... The four of you? That trick you pulled with the Lionel. You removed one of the more uh, important players on our side of the field. I don't think they're going to object if we were to say that it's effectively a lost cause at this point. There is valor in knowing your limits. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. You mentioned a contract with the two villages. How formal of a contract is that? Do you have it in writing? Is it a verbal agreement? It was more I'd of like a to verbal. Know the terms. It was a more verbal agreement, but for the most part, they simply asked us to uh, provide some form of distraction or support when it came to um, when it came to their side of the conflict, as it were. We're only a recent addition, come to think of it. Uh, we only joined a little ways after the. Um, after the king had passed away, or your king, I suppose, um, he, the... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's need for that um, qualification if the villagers don't have a king themselves. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I was part of something of a triumvirate and was outvoted uh, Whoever the uh, the rebelling villages had hired, oof, she was a real negotiator. Let me tell you, red hair. Yeah, quite short too. We Does that sound looking. like Cassandra? Just like we happen to be looking for her. Oh, you are. I see. We have some business with her. Hmm. Well, I mean, as far as things go, there is quite a bit of information in that in that aspect. Let's see. He kind of once again looks. It looks over each of you. Um, it's clear that he doesn't want to simply just divulge information. Yeah, he readily. doesn't want to just roll over. Yeah. Um, so he says, uh, tell you what, how about this? Um, if at all possible, you could provide to me and my men some form of immunity to give us the safety to leave this battlefield. 
without having to run afoul of uh, any Hylian forces, which I will admit is understandable if they are feeling a bit sore. It's the nature of conflict and all. But I can provide you not only with information on the contract and that woman, but also something else that might be of interest to you. Any details on what that something else is? The thing that they are working on in Midas. That is of interest. Max is mostly going to look at Ranji for this part because we've gotten to the part of the conversation where Max is like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't believe we have gotten your name. General Rakar is my name. General Rakar. You seem like an intelligent type. You are speaking to enemy combatants here. Likewise, this is how we consider you in our estimation. We are here to get this war over with. I would say there is an easy way. Surrender to us. I would even give you a writ that in case you run afoul of any guards you can show that you have surrendered to the Hyrulean forces and if you do not break any further laws that should be that kind of squints at you for a moment um give me a it well, depends on depends on your intonation give me a persuasion or an intimidation if it's intimidation i help <laughs> um it is not intimidation this this is I am simply stating... If like, it's not intimidation, this, this, I also help. I can help with that. That is fair. Mm -hmm. uh, this is simply the this, this state of things that I'm explaining. Like, this is what we can do. This okay. is what I particularly can do. Um, and so, this is my perception, uh, which is not what you asked. This is my persuasion, which is what you asked. At 34. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With a 34, but, he... But, but if you want to have the first roll, <laughs> that would be a 28. Yeah. But either way, it's... A... Help. I was receiving yeah. help, that is true. So it would be that advantage, so you're also dice anyway. Yeah. So, with a 34, um, kind of squints at you, thinks about it for a long while. Um, and it says, the way that different armies handle surrender is, well, different. Mm. In order to, uh, let's say, make the part look good, what exactly would be involved if we were to go along with this surrender? The four of us here could do a little performance if you really need to. Or, if necessary, we can just show the uh, the Lionel's remains. Well, we have our ways of making ourselves audible throughout your camp. I I don't mean in that fashion. Mm. I mean terms of surrender. Terms of ceasefire, in terms of immunity, they're different things. If we were to officially surrender to the to the uh, forces of Hyrule, would we be captured? Would we be uh taken somewhere specific or would we just have a slap on the wrist and let go? What's your plan well, here? 
the four of us, I will just simply say, we have no capability of capturing you. However, the Lionel, we fought it, it fell to our blades very quickly. I don't want this to happen here, simply because of just practically I, the hassle. I, th I think he's just asking, does he have to like hand over all his weapons or something? Well, for the question of like, you have Any to establish what he has done in the war to establish what would be the effective punishments for his actions. Mm -hmm. I don't think also don't know how really... Hyrule's rules handle what sounds like it's basically just mercenaries doing mercenary work. Yeah, is there anything that I know about like wartime? Give me, Give me a history check. History check. That's a 12. Okay. Um, it's difficult it's to say. There's probably been soldiers surrendering to each side on both sides of this war, too. Yeah. So that, that, that might be information you could use. Yeah. Mm. In, a, in most instances, when it comes to this specific conflict, surrender basically means that you are made a prisoner until such a time as uh, your sentence is believed served. And usually that happens when the war is over. Um, that uh, there's uh, when it comes to mercenaries it's a bit different essentially yeah your service has been paid and your loyalty is tied to how much coin that you have been given but you still did something in service to and under the banner of an enemy and you're more or less treated as if you were a loyal soldier who's fighting for their country rather than their coin purse um, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm trying to figure out what is possible. I, I have here. a question. Mm -hmm. How good? I'm gonna turn to the general and say, how good are your people at say building? I had that same idea. Make them laborers to serve their sentence and make automatic. them help repair Sarkoza. That too. Either would work. Hmm. And it looks around. The attack that happened. <laughs> I can see it in a roll for his. Okay. Right. So he kind and, of. And, and, if, and if the answer is not very, you could at least keep him safe. Yeah. Um. Kind of looks about a bit. Looks to the table, like the the table in front of him. Puts a hand on it, wobbles it, and is just like. I mean, they can put up a wall. Uh, they can put good up enough. these things, but <laughs> this, is just like, this, is like, this is good enough. If they can follow instructions, I mean. <laughs> well, if that's the suggestion, then that might be worth our time. Let's see. He'll push himself off the stool and look over the table again. Um. And he will uh, begin kind of pointing a finger at different spots within the, uh, within the war effort. Um, he'll say, right, so since our enlistment into this war, a few things have happened, of course. Um, the Lionel came here before us, um, but they've largely been an independent force. And in fact, they've been more of a danger to our side than anyone else. But they're taken care of now. We don't need to worry about that. Um, there was that one dark nut, but they were taken care of by the Lionel from what reports I received. Um, we... He's alive. Um, yes. Yeah. We ah. uh, we pushed him up. Good for him. So, King's Ward, we have been given instructions to simply menace, but not actually invade. Um, we were then given instructions to similarly menace the uh, supply that had been going from Hyrule Castle Town to Sarkoza and back again. Um, 
that was a more recent order, of course. Um, Rudal, we have been told not to touch, uh, especially recently. Um, I think them going independent had uh, scuppered a few plans for the rebelling villages. Yes, we've seen what the plans were for Rudal. Then uh, he turns his attention to Midas and Vestal. Um, he says, So, it's been a while since I have been to Midas, but they have been spent their time turning it into a fortress and expanding its borders somewhat. They've been uh, receiving refugees from Vestal. There is no other base term for them. They are being people are being pulled from Vestal to Midas, but Vestal itself is not actually being abandoned. There is a, uh, a contingent there um, that is specifically just to keep it occupied. It's gone from a town to a village to essentially a forward outpost for the war. One would think, tactically, they would just be better off abandoning the place and having all of their resources into one location, but they found something near Vestal, and I think they want to ensure that they can find more things if anything unique comes up there. The thing they found, if I am right in saying this, probably going to be put into the thing that they are working on in Midos. I don't know the specifics. All I know that all I know is that it is simply called a metal giant. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Some sort of magical artifice? Possibly. I thought something like that before. Hmm. As for your, uh, as for your target, again, not since that meeting where we were recruited into this side of the war have we actually laid eyes on her, but I haven't exactly found myself too trusting of her in any capacity. She doesn't I seem... Hmm? I'm guessing she spends most of her time in my dust. Yeah, I would think so, but I don't know. From what reports I can glean as we communicate with soldiers, something is up. This woman is not exactly one fit for the battlefield. They don't like it. Um, but I think if I was going to put money on something, I would say that they are likely to utilize the distraction, or a large enough distraction, to escape any general worth their salt would be able to see the situation at the moment and think one of two things one it is a losing battle the rebels are running out of resources they had to condense everything down to one location and are making their one final stand or two whatever this metal giant is has to be real damn good good enough that they would have confidence that it would be able to sustain their place in the war or possibly even win it. It's their last resort. He nods. That's not taking into account the weird stuff that's been happening around here the past few days. Strange kind of... sensation in the air. Mm -hmm. The men are thinking everything is haunted. It is. The, uh, we saw those. Ah, good. Good to know that my men are not going mad. We've taken to burning a lot of the bodies of folks who pass away, just to be sure. But, yeah. I don't know what's going on. I'm not exactly magically inclined. But I ain't so foolish as to not see that something is about to happen, 
and I don't think that the rebels are the ones that are behind it. No, but they are being moved by that same force. That's at least around. <sighs> but yes, that would be the information that I could provide. My two fellow commanders had since passed away in combats of their own, leaving me alone in charge. And you have come along quite interestingly, more or less, as my saviors. And you give me an out. And uh, if working as protection or construction in Sarkoza is the way that this surrender is going to go down, then I think... I think that'll work out in our favor, too. We could probably talk to Rasher and mm -hmm. let her know. I could try and see if the Sending Stone has uh, found its way back there. If not, we could always write a letter and tell him mm -hmm. and let him take it. Sealed by uh, all the well, all but one of the barons of uh, Artemark. Yeah. D does that mean something? Yeah, it it does. Noble signatures on paperwork can get through a lot of things. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Typically, because it means that we are uh, putting are our name against it. We... Yes. So we can be held liable if it goes wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the general and say, it won't. Okay. Lamgo <laughs> <laughs> is going to have to scale up with all of the people we keep sending him. Gonna come back and two of them are gonna be working in a shop. Yep. And then ten years and ten years later epilogue and just Sarkoza has like Flamgo's Bass Pro Bass Shop Pro Pyramid just sitting in the <laughs> middle of it. <laughs> hey, given his pyramid and Laurel. Yeah. <laughs> given his thing originally with a pet shop, I just suddenly imagined he'll like have a chain of pet cafes. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Lionel Cafe. Don't go in there. <laughs> you really, really want to, but here's a disclaimer, and here's a here's uh, a waiver. Yes. Please sign it before you go in. <laughs> uh, have fun, I guess. Yeah. I'm now going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, are you going to try the Sending Stone before I sending am. a letter? Okay. Yes. Um, so you try the Sending Stone. What do you say first? Um, Who is currently holding this? Yeah, I was, I was like, um, come in. <laughs> kind this of lost is, track of where it's gone. Uh, this is a Renji Vox. Does anyone hear me? Uh, after a moment... Um, there's a brief period of time where nothing comes back, but eventually something comes in. And says, Hello, hello. Uh, I I apologize. This is I I don't use these very often, uh, if at all. Uh, Renji, is that you, as Risha? Good, Risha. Excellent. Oh, the um, runner made good time. The runner made good time. Uh, you're in Sarkoza, correct? Uh, for the moment, I was about to pr make preparations to head down to King's Ward. What's happened? Uh, we are to the north, uh, west, north northwest of King's Ward. We are in a Belblin camp. Are you captured? Are you we hurt? We are not captured. No. We are <laughs> discussing <laughs> terms Matt just leans over, over Reggie's shoulder and says that they wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare. Uh, I was going to say, my estimations in you would have fallen rather sharply if you had gotten captured. <laughs> Yes, no, that, that hasn't happened. Uh, <laughs> as I was about to say, we are discussing terms of surrender uh, with 
I am so sorry, I forgot your name, General... General Rakar. General Rakar, the remaining general of the Belblin forces here. Um, we have been discussing them taking on a position of security or construction labor for Sakosa Port. Oh. Well, um... Good work. Uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up, uh, and and maybe you know, if that is a a bad, uh, a bad decision on our part to to at least have uh, you to uh, brainstorm with. No, no, no. That's. I mean, well, it, it might cause a bit of tension with the men here. But the understood. Otherwise, if it if it gets a sizable force out of the war, then by all means, that that seems uh, like I. Let's just say that it is far more preferable that it didn't have to be by a lot of bloodshed that this same mm -hmm. conclusion had to come about. Um, all we had to do was kill the Lionel. Oh, you took care of the Lionel. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Reese is like, I, like Reese is now going through the process of like why didn't I ask you to start this sooner so <laughs> we had all the things to do we had to get levels yeah I had to get the stupid amount of HP <laughs> we were grinding on the battlefield and not the dance floor Uh, where you going? Okay, so to clarify, the Lionel is dead. Mm. The Belblins are surrendering. That only leaves whatever's left of the Rebel forces. Okay. We have also got more information a... about uh, Vestal and Midos, which uh, I'd like to uh, discuss later on. I, uh, of course. By all means, um... Yeah, when we're not in the camp anymore. Yes. Tell, uh, tell General Raka that if they are intent on, or uh, if they are intent on their surrender and they are agreeable to the terms, then by all means send them up to Sarkoza. I will inform the men and ask them to keep a level head. Um, I, after I've done that, I will probably be trying to find a horse of some kind to get down to King's Ward. Um, in order to uh, begin tactical maneuvers there. Um, but I'll have the Sending Stone on me. Um, uh, did you get that, General? I, uh, I had you on uh, Speaker Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Last bit. General <laughs> was like, oh, I'm... I understand, and of course, as I said, conflict happens. Um, Is it something you can sell to your forces? I will tell them that that is what is going to happen, and we will explain that you have already killed the Lionel, and if they uh, object to that factor, well, I have to handle that bridge when it comes to it. All right then. Um, You'll be fine. In case you find yourself uh, meeting guardsmen between now and uh, your trip to up to Sarkoza, I will also uh, be writing you a letter. You can give that to anyone who asks for your business. And uh, people in Sarkoza, well, they know now. Was awfully kind of you. Hmm. It's business, and I take out a piece of paper, take out my writing set, and I start writing down the terms signed Renji Vox, Baron 
of Artemark, I start writing down, like, I can't see you, Max, Zidon, barons of Artemark, uh, and allow them to uh, sign or write an X. Ma Zidon Max goes for a completely unintelligible squiggle of lines with a signature. <laughs> Max, re remembering that everything he writes comes out in Draconic, just puts his name in Draconic. <laughs> <laughs> that works! That works. <laughs> I think this is the first time y'all see how bad Yakan is at things and his name is not spelled correctly. It's oh. fine. It's a signature. No one cares. Yeah. Exactly. Yakan. As long as it looks vaguely similar to your last one, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I roll it up. Uh, I grab one of the candles that must be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is poorly done. This is not necessarily sealing wax. Um, but I press the uh, signet ring that I've received from my father uh, in. Yeah. And I hand it over to uh, General Rakon. He'll happily take it. Not approvingly. Stow it somewhere and says, Well, I suppose that is the plan as it were. Now to tell the men. And he, like, begins to totter out back into the center of the thing. You may want to cover your ears. This is about to get loud. Um, want, me to, want me to make you louder? Oh, yes, please. I cast Sobotergy on him. <laughs> okay. So, uh, as he steps out, I step 10 feet away from him. <laughs> And ten feet away from everyone else. Uh, Ness, is, Ness is just kind of slightly smiling to himself like, this is going to be funny. And uh, <laughs> as I kind of I dra draw my rapier, and as I uh, stab into the air, there is a thunderclap. <laughs> you stab, there is a thunderclap, work around the camp stops. The general just kind of stands in the middle, puts his hands around his mouth, and uh, so Boblins are capable of of an alerting the, the call. The loudest oi you've ever mm -hmm. heard. Yeah, it, they are <laughs> they are capable of doing uh, like doing an alerting kind of screeching howl a monkey call that's audible from two hundred feet away, oh. boosted by thaumaturgy. Three times louder. <laughs> boosted by thaumaturgy. Everything within a tenth of a mile can hear this. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I suppose his hand over his hands over his ears and it's just like with it. <laughs> At which point like the camp stops. Even some of the bulblins who are naturally capable of this sound are like clearing their ears out and rubbing the sides of their head. Um and the says Listen up! The gentlemen behind me have been kind enough to inform me that they have slain the Lionel that is the one of the cruxes of the rebellious army. As such, it is my call as the only remaining general of the, Blood, the Bladestorm Battalion to say that our forces are no longer on the winning side. They have been kind enough to provide us with an alternative thing to do with our time. Namely, we are going to be going to Sarkoza, and we are going to be providing protection and additional construction. This is for the benefit and in strengthening of our battalion. So I expect you to be finishing your work and getting your shit together so that we can start moving now. If you have any objections, you are more than welcome to come to the center and voice them. Make sure your argument is convincing, because I can assure you it will be the last one it will be, you will be making if it is not. Am I clear? And there is a a pause, and then there are a couple of less loud but still cacophonously loud howling, screeching noises that kind of radiate from different areas around the camp and even beyond. Um, are they good or bad screeching noises? Because I can understand them. I'm gonna roll a 
persuade. Oh, you did roll very well on persuasion. <laughs> um, Does he get advantage from the thaumatist? <laughs> you know, he should have. <laughs> Oh, still same number. Um, okay. but, uh, yeah. Funny, though. Funny. Um, they are seemingly good because after these howlings have stopped, a number of the men turn around and begin to promptly pack their things and prepare for a long journey. Um, there are a couple of... There's a, there is at least one... One who walks up and starts screaming in Blin at at the general about how this is a disgrace, this is cowardly, this is uh, this is not something that should be should ever have been done. Um, we are warriors. We do. We fight. We fight to the last. We this is it is our way. Uh, he rolls a two on his deck save as Rakar grabs him by the side of the head pulls him close, point-blank range, and with Thaumaturgy boosted still, screeches in his ear. Um, <laughs> oh no. He then, like, pushes him back, the, this Bulbin stumbles and go like, vert immediately hit with Vertigo. Poof, poof, poof. It's just... Uh, uh, and the general was like, you done? Um, and oh, the Bulbin on the floor is like, what? <laughs> I was just going to look at Max and it's like, is 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 this guy saying anything important? No. Uh -huh. Fin Gerald. Finally, at level eighteen, Max is developing a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ricard just kind of like points to the bull boss. Um, with with the look in his eye of like, I will kill you if you don't. And um, the Bulblin, suitably intimidated, scrambles to their feet and. There are some languages you don't need to be able to hear to understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the general turns back and gives you a nod and says, and says, it. I'm gonna I'm that... gonna turn Thaumaturgy off. As okay, good. Goes to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, like he starts. It's only a minute. It's fine. Don't worry. He, he start. He starts in a whisper, then realizes he's speaking normally again. Uh, that, oh, thank you. We'll uh, we'll get there eventually. There'll be some folk out in the field who are gonna need some messages, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get there. Possibly. It's a big place, though. But we'll uh, we'll get that message out. And if they aren't, and they're still fighting for the rebels, well, that's their choice. Um, mm. <laughs> it'll say, uh, now, if you, you're more than welcome to stick around, though it's about to just be an empty pile of wood and lean-tos in a little bit. Oh, we have other things to do. Okay. Well, safe travels to you. And to you. Don't get into any trouble. Easier said than done. <laughs> Good luck. It'll, it'll and then we will off. confidently march back out of the camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Important question. Does he give us a key so we, we can access the treasury? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Different Dublin. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Different time period. Yeah. Oh, dear. What what if his either ancestors or descendants will have that key? Maybe we were the ones to have supposedly give him the key. Oh no, we forgot anyway. Oh darn it! No, no. We've written the timeline. Snake, you've made a time paradox. Huh? We've created a time paradox. <laughs> time paradox. Huh. Yeah. So they'll they'll busy themselves with packing up camp and then making their way north, uh, leaving you to your own devices. Um, as you march confidently out of camp, where do you head to before contacting Risha again? Uh, a little to the west, I think. Yeah, we'll start heading in the direction of Vessel and Midas, mm. but not get to them before we told her. Okay, yeah. I'll put you about here then. Did, did we have time in the camp to do something like a short rest? We'll um, probably pause and do that now. Yeah. 
Like, in, you can contact Risha during the course of your short rest if you need to. Just okay. kind of, like, yeah. sit down, take yeah. a breather, have a snack. Yeah, I'll, uh... Uh, I'll, uh... For short rest, I'm going to roll some dice. Uh... Bring out the sending stone. And... Give her more of an update on, uh, what's... Oh, that's a lot. Nice. I rolled six of them. <laughs> And they were none of them were below a four. <laughs> I will roll. So I got all my health back, and that's what's important. I yeah. have enough healing now. I was hit for five points. And also, my sorcery points back. So you can only have that. There. I'm going to spend one of my d10s as well. God damn it. Oh. I'm not wrong. You want to do Song of Rest for us, buddy? Oh, absolutely. I would like <laughs> yeah. to do that. I keep forgetting that. Okay, so that's a D. Whenever Risha's talking, you just have me in the background. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm probably just like sharing stories of, of things that I, I've heard growing up and mm. kind of keeping the mood light. Mm hmm. Yeah, you uh, um, you yeah, yeah. I ring up uh, uh Risha. You up? <laughs> uh, Risha's like, uh, Risha was, uh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Are you available Just, to talk? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am available to talk. Well, uh, we've just left the Boblin encampment. Um, General Rogar uh, has informed us that Vestal has become more of a forward operating base for the uh, resistance and Midos is being turned into a full on fortress yeah. it's also been a find of some sort of either mechanical or magical giant construct that they're probably bringing to Midos. Hmm. Um, I don't know how big it is, personally. Uh, we had, did not get any details on that. We have had a few of our scouts uh, perform work or perform reconnaissance in that area over the past month mm -hmm. or so. Suffice to say, we haven't seen anything of a sizable caravan pass between those two villages that would suggest something of of large size. Hmm. We have so whatever, so whatever it is has been in my dust the whole time. Perhaps, hmm. unless of course whatever they found was only a part of what their what this metal giant is. This. Hmm. It does concern me slightly that they have essentially abandoned Vestal and left it only to the soldiers. We haven't really even done anything that would require the evacuation of a settlement. I think, for the most part, whatever's happening in this conflict, it is... It is proving that they would rather go down swinging than simply call it off. It sounded to me like it was their last resort. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, if that is the case... Perhaps it would be best if we were to understand what it is that they are utilizing and working on, whatever it is they have found. 
maybe a visit to Vestal would be a, a wise idea. Or at least uh, some is the form. Plan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what of Cassandra? Any news on her? She's most likely a murderess. Mm hmm. Hmm. The general believed that she was going to run. Again? I try to. Which means she's probably got an escape route planned. Where I'm going to have to deal with it. Question is, where's left for her to run to? Mm. Indeed. This is one of those situations where I, I too do not think it is going to make any difference whether or not we say that she can surrender. I wasn't planning on giving her the option. Honestly, fair because enough. If, because if we do, she'll just run. Very well. I think at this point in time we need to cover all of our bases. Um, I will... I'm st I am still in Sarkoza at the moment. I will ask if there are any ships that are available, even if it's simply frigates, and we'll send a small contingent to run along the coast. If there is a ship or a port hidden away that Cassandra might use to escape by sea, then we will occupy it to block off that route. The only other places I can think of her, I think she would attempt to go, would be to the Gerudo Desert. Um, we have friends there. Hmm. Meaning that other than that, she would have to retreat inland, putting her back into enemy territory. I think after dealing with Vestal, if we were to if you were to make your way to Mydos, see how fortified it is. My suggestion would also be to find what this metal giant is. And if you have the capability to put it down. We can deal with Cassandra when she has no other options left. Hmm. We'll have to do it. Right. Well then. Gentlemen. Let's go end this war. Just Pax nods and then realizes that he can't see and goes, Alright. <laughs> I do look over to the uh to Hikan and Sidon, kind of wondering how they're feeling about all of this. Yeah, they didn't think I was gonna be coming and stopping a war. Surprise. I think we, how long have we even been at this? Uh, a couple of months now. This part exactly, probably about two days. All the other stuff, yeah, that led up to it. We haven't had a calendar in this game, so... Yeah. Next game. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> yes. A bit late to start a calendar now. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you folks need to ask Arisha before carrying on? Oh, we have a plan really. of action. I don't believe there's anything that Renji needs to discuss at the moment. Okay. Max knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That is the case. You uh, gather your things after you have um, uh, finished your rest and you make your way towards Vestal. The trip oh. is... Hmm? Oh, no, go ahead. No, you, you go for it. Oh, uh, so since it's an enemy outpost, do we want to go at night? Or do we want to go quickly? Honestly, going at night and sneaking in at first might be a good idea. Get some intel. If uh, that sounds good to everyone, I can play Song of the Sun Reprisal, which will make it nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All the Baldwin's like, what the fuck? <laughs> More weird shit. It's extra hard run. So you, uh, you take out the Harp of the Goddess. You mm -hmm. begin to play uh the song of the sun um and as the music within uh charges this magic uh the four of you stand idle as the rest of the world begins to fast forward um you watch as the sun and the clouds race by overhead and the sun begins to move uh, perceptibly quickly down below the horizon before total darkness envelops the area and night has crept in. Uh, you and your party have basically skipped to the night um, while the rest of the world has carried on without you. Um, <laughs> of a long rest. No. Uh, it does oh. not, no. <laughs> that, that, was, that was weird. It was, yes. Yeah, you can uh, you can see in the distance some lights have come on from what you presume to be Vestal, um, but uh, yeah, it is total pitch darkness. Uh, not even, despite the fact that it is a relatively clear night, you don't see any stars. Mm. Trippy ghost magic. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay. So it is that you journey forward through the darkness, through the silence. The only sound that you can hear is the occasional clatter of your equipment, the rustle of the cloth that you are wearing and the crunching of the grass beneath your feet. Mm. It is not stable footing, of course, but you manage all the same. Um, as you move closer and closer to Vestal. Eventually, you do manage to get there and see it. Um, just hi hiding behind a rock or just behind a little crevice, you see Vestal, this small little, almost like a hamlet, the way that it's been arranged upon this uh, little rocky rise um, where uh, some of the land surrounding it does appear to be farmland, but a lot of the area uh, seems to give way to some marsh. Um, the lights that you can see are several standing torches, as well as torches wielded by uh, folks who are uh, wearing what you can see, at least from this distance, to be a kind of this patchwork set of um, chain mail with bits and pieces of leather and plate. Um, it's like functional and has some form of uniform uh, nature to it, but it's not really the, a traditional set of armor that you would assume uh, in most instances. It's quite possible that as these uh, rebel soldiers, at least you assume them to be rebel soldiers because they look nothing like the Hylian soldiers that you've encountered previously. Um, it seems like it's essentially whatever high, like high quality gear, possibly magical gear that they have been given possibly by the Twilight Cartel 
a while ago, maybe even like the last dregs of what Cassandra was able to provide the rebels uh, since the cartel's uh, disassembly by your good selves a month or so ago. I can make up to three of us invisible. If you three want to go in, I can fly above. They won't be looking up too much. Hmm. I can Zion, give you a bird's eye view and let you know. You want... I, can, I can give you a bird's eye view and let you know where gods are going. Mm -hmm. I might have something for that. Sidon, do you want invisible or do you want wild shape? Uh, invisible's good, and wild shape wants necessary. Max won't need invisibility. Do we have a communication uh, way of communicating with Max? Yeah, you do. Max? Max has a sending stone with you guys that he bought. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be Fourth above level and basically point out where guards are. Okay. So you, help. You, you fly overhead. <sighs> Silently into the night, covered by the darkness, as you I'm predict. I'm going to help the darkness a bit. Okay. To basically darken the the air in front of me. Nice. So that when people look up, they just see darkness. Cool. Um, the lack of stars certainly helps in that factor. Yep. Um. Also, the stars like twinkle in and out all the time. So even if they were there. They probably wouldn't pay much mind to it. Hmm. Okay, and then the remainder of you turn invisible and slink into the camp. Um, roll for me some stealth with advantage. Okay. Oh, yeah, for, for audio only people, I, I cast um, Major Image. 31. 24. Natural 20 for 25. Nice. Okay. So. Silently, invisibly, you descend upon the camp. Max, as you fly overhead, you can see that the number of actual people patrolling around here, considering the size of the village, doesn't seem all that much. Whatever force is here, it seems token at best. Get the skeleton grew. Yeah. Um, like as you kind of look over the wall and look into the look into the uh, the homes below, only a few of them have their lights on in the windows. Um, there are one or two uh, soldiers who are patrolling up and down the streets. Um, and at least one or two civilians who seem to be running back and forth in order to tend to a few things, but otherwise the entire place looks more or less empty. Um, you can see uh, at the northern end of town, uh, next to one of the gates, appears to be a like a, a mess of a stockpile. Um, this uh, collection of boxes and tools that have just been haphazardly stored by um, this gate. Uh, meanwhile, um, yeah, those on the ground... Yeah, what I see. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, those of you on the ground, um, you begin to slink into town and you get a much more up-close look as to what Vestal is like. Actually, you put the flag onto Vestal because you are actively there. Um, hey. You... Uh, you head into... into Vestal. And as you move past people and are able to uh, avoid being seen, um... You get a closer look at one of the guards. Um, they appear to be wielding... Um, 
Where have I got the thing here? There we go. Uh, they appear to be wielding simply spears. Um, but they look very nice. More so than you would expect for a uh, a standard soldier to have. Um, it's this these kind of like uh, metallic haft with uh, ornate sweeping spearheads that have been gilded in places. Um, if you have uh, detect magic up in any capacity, you notice that that is indeed magical, as is the armor that they wear, and also the potion that sits on their belt. All of them have at least one of these potions, and all of them have these same spears and bits of haphazard armor. Um, they are remarkably well armed, especially considering uh, their opposition, which, while the Hylian soldiers tend to have very well crafted metal armor and weapons, they don't tend to be outfitted with magic so easily. Um, as you uh, as you scout around, you do hear the like soldiers or these soldiers kind of talking to one another every so often as they patrol the wall. Um, but now that you're here, is there anything that you are looking for in particular? I am personally, I think, looking for a uh, headquarters, any kind of place that is uh, particularly fortified, and as you say, like, protected with uh, well-equipped guards, so this is kind of like what I'm, what I'm looking for. Max will okay. be essentially providing help to people by pointing things out from above. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, with advantage, give me a perception check. See if you can perception. find where the headquarters of this is, would be. That is a 24 with advantage. Okay. Um, so, as you begin to hunt around and quietly communicate with Max up on high, you do note that the local tavern has probably has been outfitted to be uh, effectively the headquarters of this uh, of this place. Um, you can hear some more raucous chatter from within, and peering in through the window, you note that there are a lot of these rebel soldiers in here, and they're being tended to by a few civilians who are providing drinks and food. Um, but otherwise, it's just. It, you assume, that, like, you can see that a, one or two of the tables have been pushed together in order to make a larger sort of tactical discussion thing. Um, you can see that uh, uh, as you move around the building and peer through windows, you can see what looks to be the, uh, the communal sort of um, common room sleeping area, um, or at least one of the larger rooms has been converted into something akin to a uh, uh, infirmary, which doesn't currently have anybody sitting in any of the beds. Um, there's one guy, but as you kind of scan him over, uh, you are easily able to tell that he's not injured, he's drunk. Um, mm. But um, yeah, it it's clear from the assessment that this tavern has been made into the major headquarters and some like battlefield hospital for this uh for this outpost as it were hmm. where are the well equipped guys going to or like are they the, guarding a particular place so every soldier here is well equipped mm. everyone even the ones guarding the wall um they uh for the most part if they're not patrolling just the streets or keeping an eye out on the wall with a torch uh they are probably in this tavern uh just relaxing and um talking mm. and probably using the rooms to get some sleep is there a balcony or something uh on a higher level on the tavern uh, there's not a balcony, but there are plenty of windows that appear to be open. 
Okay. Um. I should do. I want to go in. Fuck it. I'll go in. Okay. So with your monk capabilities, you are easily able to uh, to scale the wall and uh, pick a window to head inside. You look in. Um, and find the one room that is currently unoccupied and slip inside. It's deathly quiet. You can hear snoring from one or two of the rooms uh, neighboring yours. Um, you go, if you go over to the door to try and open it, it is indeed unlocked. Um, and it gives you a view of the, of the corridor that can uh, head down to the main area or up one more floor in order to get to more rooms. I think I'm going to try to quietly go forward and go up to more rooms, trying to see if there's like an office that someone's using since this seems to be the HQ. Okay. Okay. Right. Um... So, still using your stealth, you uh, move inside, head up the stairs, and you see you do see a few more of these rooms, one of which appears to have the light on, um, and if you peer inside, it does not look like a bedroom, it does look like some kind of office. I'm going to listen to see if there's somebody inside. Perception check, please. Absolutely. Well, uh, that was that had advantage on it, uh, so it would be a twenty-three. Instead okay. Of twenty-four. No worries. With the twenty-three, you sit and wait for a while. You don't hear the sounds of movement from the room. I carefully and slowly try the door okay slide you take the handle you turn it push open slightly you stop you wait to hear see if anybody comes to investigate because whenever you're trying to be quiet everything sounds ten times louder mm. yeah when all is still, you push open further. Stop. Stop. And at this point, the door is open enough that you can kind of sidle on in quietly. For an office, it seems pretty sparse. There is a singular desk, a singular chair. Um, there are There is a box that is filled with uh, rolled up, what you can presume to be maps, given their size. Um... And a few other bits of scraps of notes, um, crumpled up letters or pieces of paper uh, tossed haphazardly to one side. Um, but you are alone in this room. Okay, I would like to look for any notes on, I suppose, mining or whatever they're doing to look for more of the metal giants or metal stuff. Okay. See if there's anything here about that. Give me a, another perception check as you search the room. Absolutely. How about a 29? 29. Okay. Um, let's see. So, you spend a bit of time taking care of, like, going through all these bits. You carefully uncrumple some of the pieces of paper that have been thrown to the thrown to the wayside. After a little bit of time, you note that uh, there is mention of a a brief mining operation that happened at a barrow north of Vestal, um, within which they apparently found a magical artifact that they think would be capable of powering. Um, the project in Midos. I th 
think that just confirms what General Rakar told us. I mean, I'm going to take it anyway. Uh, but is there any mention of anything looking forward or looking for more or anything along those lines at this moment in time? Uh, there are orders uh, where... What was it? There's a. There appears to be uh, the... Uh, a lot of the actual papers that have been crumpled appear to be drafts of letters um, where it seems that the author is attempting to very diplomatically try and put that this is a pointless endeavor um, to stay in Vestal if there's no one in Vestal in order to protect anymore. Um, but uh, the orders that seem to have come in have said to stay in Vestal in order to keep it as a defensive forward um, and also to uh, prepare for additional operations to find further um, trinkets of import. Um, so it's possible that there are at least plans in the future to do more mining or to do more hunting for magical artifacts since they found the one, so they might as well. But whether or not they um, then decide to continue a lot, or whether or not they've been given that order and they just haven't bothered to do that yet. Um, that's a different matter. You might have to look into that. But uh, otherwise, yeah. they as The whole story being, they found a thing in, Ves in Vestal, they've sent it to Midos, um, and have been given orders to maintain protection over Vestal, despite the fact that all the civilians have been effectively evacuated. Um, or if they haven't been evacuated, they've gone somewhere, perhaps changed sides or gone to a different village not involved in the war or something along those lines. Um, but the soldiers here are ordered to stay here and they haven't been given a date as to whether or not they're going to be relieved of that duty, if at all. Okay, so I will take the some of the drafts, I will take the current orders, and I will take the things that confirm what we heard from Rakar. I will quietly close the door, and I will head out the window if there's a window in this room. There is. Um, you're able to open the window and slip out without being seen. While Hakan was doing that, what were uh, Renji and Zaiden up to? I think uh, Renji would have stayed outside, um, given that he's the one concentrating on this. Okay. And he doesn't want to get into any trouble that he can't get out of without another spell. Okay. And Zaiden? Uh, probably keeping an eye out on the general area around, making sure no one's coming over. Okay, give me a perception check. 27. Okay. Uh, with a 27. So you keep an eye out on the area. You can see that there are occasionally people who wander by, like the occasional single soldier who just lackadaisically walks uh, through the streets on their usual patrol. Um, seems quiet for now. Um, though you do occasionally, as you, as you turn uh, to look down an alleyway caught in the glimmer of a light you see a familiar looking sort of silhouette another one of those uh humanoid figures all drenched in black um like you have seen before out in the field uh you blink and they're gone but um Besides the flickering of flame and the activity inside the, the tavern turned HQ, everything is silent. No one has noticed you. Um, but yeah, if you uh, 
if if you are waiting for Hikar to return, it doesn't take long uh, before event. Is, is there hmm? anything that looks like a dig side? Give me a perception check. Fourteen. Mm. Um, you don't think so. You see, like an er within the darkness, you can see an errant torch that is uh, some ways north from Vestal, but uh, the light it illuminates doesn't show any kind of dig site. It does show a path, though, a very worn and, uh, or I say worn, a very uh, or a a not very used path, but definitely a path that proceeds through some of the trees and across some of the marsh. Um, but you don't see a dig site per se. You do see like plenty of like as you kind of look at the supplies and at the northern gate, you do see a lot of them are like shovels, picks, a wheelbarrow or two, that sort of thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this way through the sunny sun. Dig site might be to the north, can't tell from here. But there's things that indicate it might be that way. And I, don't, I don't know if we need to check it out, but it, it's nice to know that it's there. Yeah. Mm. Eventually, uh, Ikan, you regroup with the others. I got some papers. Some of it confirming things. Current orders. Drafts of letters trying to say that this is pointless to stay here. But... I think I would like to stay back a moment and with the Sending Stone, check in with Max. Hey. Did you not get my last message? I did. Okay. Happy to discuss, uh, happy to check that out. Um, however, also, have we set fire to the headquarters? Uh, no. Why are you asking me that? I don't want to make that decision. Mm. <laughs> no. Okay. We're not trying to increase war-related stuff. Fair. Our main job is to just find what's the name and get rid of it. Hmm. And maybe stop this giant whatever. Yes. These people don't really have much to do with that. Got it. And I'll make my way out and meet up yeah. do we want to meet up to the north then so that way we yeah. can swing by the dig site got it I'll be staying above to continue keeping an eye out for guards and stuff okay but I'll just fly yeah. a bit lower yeah as you retreat from Midos, oh, Midos, Vestal. Um, <laughs> Where are they at? Not they yet. And head northwards into the darkness to regroup and perhaps have a look at this dig site. Uh, I believe what we will do is we will call it there. Um, All right. But yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, so much for listening slash watching. This has been episode 132 of Hyrule Chronicles, the Legends of Zelda Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I am the Game Master Articula T, and with me as always I have had Renji playing or being played by Nether. <laughs> always a delight. I have had Hikansio being played by Alvarant. I had a nickel for every time I broke into somewhere and stole a bunch of papers in this game. I'd have two nickels. <laughs> Which isn't much, but it's surprising that it happened twice. I've had Zaiden Chari being played by Robo Pirate. That, uh, that went well. We've got an even bigger town now. Yeah. Um, and I have had Max being played by Keystrith. 
That's the first time I've used Major Image in like three years. I haven't had a reason to use it. Yay. <laughs> and it's we'll see one. you all now.